Are you getting the hang of and and or yet? Hmm. Well, let's talk about a few more restrictions that we can throw on this. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, I tell you. Look at question number 10. It says, determine the number of four-letter arrangements that could be formed from the word English. Yes, English. Now think about this, given the following conditions. Okay, remember, look at the word English. There's no repeats in here. There's no repeating letters. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're dealing with seven letters. Okay, that's really important to understand. Okay, all right. Let's figure out what we got to do. All right, so if we're dealing with seven letters, think about this, right? We want four letter arrangements of these seven letters. So we're not going to use all of them. We're going to use four at a time. So, okay, let's think about it. First choice, second, third, and fourth. How many choices do you have for the first one? Well, that's easy. You've got seven choices. But since you can't repeat these letters and you're going to pick one at a time, it's like picking them out of a bag. You're not going to put it back, right? Otherwise, it'd be seven all the way across all the time. That'd be kind of silly. But you want different four-letter arrangements, okay? So the first one, you got seven. You picked one out. That means you only have six left. You pick that out. You only have five choices for your third. And you pick one out one more out you got the fourth choice and you multiply that all together seven times six times five times four that works out to be 840 choices here now let's start throwing some restrictions on this well what if okay you're still going to choose four one two three four but the first letter has to be e so how many e's are uh, do you have to choose from? You only have the one. Okay, but once that E has been chosen, how many letters do you have left for this one? Well, think about it. You chose the E already. That's a given. It leaves you with six letters left to play with. How about for this choice? It leaves you with five letters left. How about for this choice? You have four. So if you multiply this out, you're actually dropping here to 100 and 20 choices. Isn't that interesting? 120 choices. Wow, that's cool. So if you substantially drop just because you put a condition on this. Hmm, it's kind of interesting. I like it. Okay, so what if the first and last letters must be vowels? Oh, wait a second. Hold it, hold it, hold it. We're getting into some heavy-duty English here. Yeah, I know. English. Well, think about it. You only have two vowels to deal with. And remember what the rule is. Deal with the conditions first. So you have four choices. Okay, here we go. Four choices. One, two, three, four choices that we have here. Four letters that are going to be pulled out according to the parameters of the first part of the question. Okay? The first one has to be a vowel. That has to be a vowel. Okay, that's fine. Well, how many vowels do you have to choose from? You got two. Okay, so you have two choices here. And it says the last one also has to be a vowel. But again, once you pull one of the vowels out, you only have one vowel left. So guess what? That's just a plain and simple number one. Now, now that you've dealt with this, remember you had seven letters in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in total. You've just dealt with the E and the I, what do you have left? We have five choices left. So you got five choices for this one. You got four choices for this spot here. You multiply five times four is 20 times two is a total of 40 different possibilities. Okay, interesting. So now, let's do another one. This one becomes even more curious. Look at this one. It's one of my favorites. In this particular question, it says the word must contain the letter G. Okay, well, my question is this then. Where does the G go? Well, if you think about it, you have four choices. One, two, three, four. The G could be in the first position. Or, did you hear that key word? Did you, did you hear it? Did you hear it? I'll say it again right, right away. Okay, ready? G can be in the first position. Or, did you hear it? There it was. Or, did you hear the or? I heard the or. Oh, my gotcha. 
or G can be in the second position. <gasps> or, there's that word again, G can be in the third position. Right? Or, 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 G can be in the last position. So you got four choices for each one of these. Now think about this for a second. Wait. If you chose G here, how many letters of a seven-lettered word do you have left? You have six letters for this one. You have five choices for this one. You have four choices for this one. So G is going to appear second. You got six choices for this one. Then the G, five and four. Think about it again. Six, five, there's the G again, and four. This is going to be six, five, four, and then G is last. See the arrangements that you can have here? Now think about this. Every time you do this, this is a, equals to, well, 5 times 4 is 20, times 6 is 120. 120 for this guy, 120 for this guy, 120 for this guy, and 120 for this guy. So there's 120 arrangements just with the letter G in the first, 120 if letter G is in the second position, third position, and fourth position, as you can see. So I want how many in total? We'll count them up. One, two, three, four. You can simply go 120 times four, or just add them all up to give you 480 possible arrangements of this. Ha! Notice what I did first for every single one of these questions. Every single one, I made sure I dealt with the restriction first.